Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're continuing now with our look in detail at the changes to Affinity Photo for version 2.1. So the next one we need to look at here is this WebP and JP EGXL in the batch job. So what this is, is if I go to File, New Batch Job here, this allows me to do a bunch of editing to a whole bunch of, or you know, a batch of images. So for example, I could say add here, let's say click and shift click to group those and take those in here. So now I've got three pictures in here, but I could have a huge number if I wanted to. And this lets me apply something to it. I can just change the size of it, just resize of it, either width or height or even both, but usually just one. And by default, it saves, saves it as the .af photo format, but I seldom doing that. So it's often you're changing it to something like if I'm going to publish it, it might be JPEG. But now you've got WebP, which is increasingly a web format. We've also got in here JPEG XL, which is a uh, HDR high definition JPEG format. We can also apply macros here so we can choose whatever macro we've got here so I could convert to SGRB and apply that and it appears up here which I can also select and remove so it will it would be applied to all of them so once I said okay off it will go and do those I can also choose where I save it into anyway that's that one but the main change there is just the WebP and JPEG, JPEG XL Next one, close all, add it to file menu. Very, very simple this, but useful. Nevertheless, and that's simply going to go file here. Not just close, but close all. So if you've got a bunch of images open here, close all will close all of those windows. Of course, it will stop on each one if it's not been saved and lets you choose what to do about it. So next, asset panel reordering improvements. Yes, that's in here. Uh, I don't even make a great deal of use of asset panels, but I do have some here. So if I want to see the asset panel, I'm going to go to Window Assets here, and this appears down here. So now I've got in here a bunch of assets, which are things in this case, they came from the Affinity Photo Store. So this one here is J.R. Uh, James Ritson's Clouds. And these are a bunch of things in here, so I can do things like an I'll drag one of these and drag it up there. So for example, now it's 1 to 20 and 41 to 60. Now I want to put that back. So I drag that back down. So it allows you to do that kinds of things. Within these, you've got the asset, actual asset themselves. So in this case it's clouds. So I just drag and put clouds and things like that onto it. And you can buy and acquire more of these, say from the Affinity Photo Store, which you can get to through help and my account. And then these down here here and look for those and you can also go browse the store and find out more things. So that's that and to get rid of this I just go down to the the hamburger there and just say close and that will close that up. What next? Mask to below. Um, this is very very simple. It's just been added to the layer menu so that if I've got something, for example, um, uh, let's go to this here and just get rid of that and delete that. But if I say, for example, I put in a new layer here, just a pixel layer. And on here, I want to paint something. So I'll just get a paintbrush and I'll just paint an area here. Whatever I'm doing, it could be a selection or whatever but this is using a brush. Then the question now is to mask to below. In other words, I want to turn this into a mask which is applied to the item below. I can do this by right clicking and say mask to below here, but now I can also do it up here, layer and mask to below, which also means I can include this in macros. There we go, mask to below and click on that. And you see this has now been turned into a mask here and put in the masking position so that it is masking this background area here. So it just puts it here. Notice it still stays as a pixel, so I can drag that back up to the top, but all it's effectively done 
is to drag this down onto the image there and that's effectively the same thing being done there so it's not a huge difference but if you like doing master below and particularly say if you want to do it in a macro then you need to do it from the menu here so that's the key use of that okay that's enough for now see you more in the next video we shouldn't have many more videos now because we're almost finished it but as you can see there's quite a lot of new things in version 2.1 that's it and thank you very much for watching